So let's get into some of the tools and techniques that Goddard used to help people create desired outcomes. So to some extent, we already talked about the law of assumption, and, and this is basically where you assume the feeling of your wish, your desired outcome fulfilled, believing that it's already happened. And and so one of the things that, that Goddard always talked about is creating like the these little um, pocket visualizations is what I'll call them. And, and so it's like a 30 second scene where if you had a, ha, had all of the success that you wanted in crypto, so, so you, your investments turned out the way that you wanted, the projects that you're working on turned out the way that you wanted, um, the community that you're building turned out the way that you wanted. On the other side of all of that, what would that look like? So, so what would you then be able to do? And, and and so, you know, one of the things he he talks about is maybe it's like a cruise ship, and and on this cruise ship, you you are meeting with friends and family, and you're able to buy their ticket for all of them to be there, and and so you walk out onto the main uh, cruise deck, show, uh, the cruise deck um, mezzanine, and. All of your friends are, are there. They're all congratulating you on your, on your success. They're all so grateful that you were able to rent this yacht and and invite them to come. And they're excited ab about what you've got planned for for the 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 week long trip that you're going to be on. And then you know maybe you're you're you have a family member or a brother there, and and, and you always have wanted to be able to help them them out in in a way. And and so you just pull them aside and and you give them you know. Thirty thousand dollars, or or you send them thirty thousand dollars in in crypto, or you Venmo them, um, and and you see their deep gratitude, and and, and you see you you know your sister in law or your wife, um, be, being like, oh my god, this is this is so awesome, like we're so we're so stoked for for your success, and what you're doing in that in that thirty second scene, you encapsulate that as a as kind of a visual meme in your mind. And you return to that and, and you start to feel how good it feels to be in that state where it's all already done. Well, that's a, that that's the state of assuming that, that it's already done. You're finding the energy of it completed. And then now you're living from that place of it's already completed. And you know that whatever happens next is the psycho cybernetics of the plane making micro adjustments towards your destination. And so whatever thing comes up, if it's frustrating, that's fine. The frustration, the, if that event, if it's triggering frustration, was it, all events in reality act as an acupuncturist. They are here to poke us in our energy systems where energy is ready to release. And, and, and so if you've gone to that state where you, you've gotten to the place where you can assume it's real, you feel it's real, you're like, ah, oh, I love that. It's happening for me. Well, and then the very next thing that happens is something frustrating. One, I used to write about this and call that the bump. So so reality will often give you something called the bump. And it's basically when you have a really strong visualization where you want to make a shift in your life, reality will then bump you and say, are you sure? Because if you're not sure, I'm not going to give it to you. And so then you have to feel through that frustration, get on the other side of it, be a good steward of the energy that is coming your way by getting back into emotional balance. And then reality says, ah, okay, we can move you to the next level. So how do we apply this to crypto? Well, before visualizing a, su a successful outcome, you want to ensure that you're emotionally balanced, like we've spoken about, and then assume the success of a crypto project as if it's a reality. So you, if you have an NFT collection, you you could you could see that that NFT collection hit its mint of of, of twelve thousand keys. I'm speaking from personal experience here, and, and you visualize what that looks like for the project and and how that allows you to sustain your your development team and and how as at the emotional sentiment of, of that moment is so good and and for that for that to have happened then that means that all of your systems are converting really well which means that e-commerce that that e-commerce value is going up month after month and, and everybody is sharing in those rewards and celebrating you have you have successful creators launching on your brand they, they, this is the visualization that I get into as we're building NF treasure and then you just feel ah that's going to happen that's happening that has happened and you live in that space and then whatever inspiration comes to you whatever the the most interesting thing to do next is is the thing even if it feels unrelated 
And this is how you end up meeting and connecting with all of the community members that ultimately help you collectively build the thing that you want to build. So it's easy to get caught into a hustle harder thing where after the visualization, you go back to your task list and you, and, and then you're immediately back in a negative emotional state because you're like, well, I don't want to have to do my taxes, but I have to get that out. Well, don't do your taxes in the moment where you feel most negative about doing your taxes. So this is something that happened to me as I was doing all the planning ar around NF Treasure and, and my consulting business. I, I had to create you know, our, our quarterly tax statements. And that meant going through thousands of transactions, hundreds of thousands of transactions, actually, and figuring out, like, how are we actually going to do all of this? And and how do I split, you know, some of the consulting work that, that I'm doing for NF Treasure versus the stuff that I'm doing outside of this? It was such a nightmare and a, and a headache. And so what I did is I stepped away from that. I said, you don't have to do that right now. And I went for a walk. I sat in the park. I, I did my process of, of kind of feeling through the frustration of that. And then how did it come about? I either had the idea or I ended up talking. Somebody called me and I ended up talking to them. But ultimately, what, what I landed on was, why don't I send a message to everybody on Manect that is an accountant or a tax professional and get their advice on what I should do? So I was like, ah, oh, that actually feels lifting. That feels good to me. So, so in that moment, I caught the creative vibe of, of what was happening there. And, and I got an idea that I could actually run with that, that felt interesting to me. So I sent a Manect audio message to like 15 different accountants uh, or tax professionals on Manect, which is this like consulting app. Um, and then I started to get feedback from them. And one of the guys was like, that's what I do, man. If you want to just hire my team, we can figure it out for you. So I jump on a call with this guy. I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's going to be way too expensive. I probably won't be able to, to afford it. He's like, actually, we really want to get into the crypto crypto space in a, in a deeper way. And we want to fine tune our processes. If you're, use, if you're willing to help us, we'll give you a really good rate. So they gave, it, gave me a really good, good rate. I feel really good about it because now I have somebody holding my hand. I'm also providing value to them because I'm helping them develop the processes by helping them understand what a crypto business actually needs. And it became this perfect fit where if after my visualization, I had just gone to my spreadsheets and be like, I guess I have to figure it out myself. Well, that would have been a nightmarish thing. And so by assuming that, no, if the interest isn't here, that means that that is not my work right now. That's not where the energy is at. So I went where the energy was at, and lo and behold, as as my grandmother used to say, that's when the miracle came in. So uh, that's a law of assumption. It, it, it's assuming that the things that are meant for you are going to are are going to find you, and and assuming that if you get into the right emotional state, you will just find that creative thread, and then assuming that the details of the outcomes that you want are available to you and and are showing up moment by moment. The next is imagination and visualization. And and in a lot of law of attraction and, and woo-woo manifestation circles, people jump immediately to imagination and visualization. And, and I feel that that's actually a mistake be, because until you do the emotional work, the imagination and visualization stuff is not nearly as effective. And so the definition of the way that Neville Goddard uses this is use your imagination to vividly picture your desired outcome. So to some extent, I worked that into the law of assumption, but the law of assumption is more like the feeling of it. it, it it's feeling that that the thing is possible where, where imagination and vi visualization is your ability to start filling in the details. So in order to fill in the details, you, you could start writing out what is it, what, what is it? taste like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? You know, what are you able to do? What are the actions that you take? What, what, when you wake up in the morning, what does your ideal day look like? Or you could do something that, that is almost a little bit more memetic. So one of the things my, my, uh, one of my coaches has me do is you take three pounds of modeling clay and you take an hour and you just build a clay model of this desired outcome and so you don't have to be good at, at, at working with clay because nobody else has to know what, what it is other than you. 
So what I would do is is I'd make these little stick figures and that represents, you know, my my developers and then another stick figure this represents my community members and and then here here's a big a, a big board and and on the board is like my development team showing me what they did and and I'm so impressed by it and th and then I put my community's hands together with it with clay and I'm like, "Oh, that's them clapping. They're so excited." And and, and then I put all these little dots down and and so my developers and I and and my girlfriend and and my community in the screen in the middle of that are were just all of these like perfect grid of dots and so this is me having all of my dots in a, in a row and everything everything lined up perfectly and and then I I made these little clay money signs over here and then and, and then arrows pointing in and then and this was the right energy the right people the the right place coming in at from 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 northwest east east and south at the right right timing and and, and us having all of the resources that we need to to make this effective so in that process I'm really starting to get detailed in my visualization of, of what a successful project looks like. And so imagination and visualization isn't just necessarily closing your eyes and seeing it. Like a lot of people say, oh, I can't visualize. Well, one, if you start to do the emotional work that, that I'm talking about, the, the your ability to, to not visualize is mostly an emotional thing be, be because whether you actually see it visually or you hear it or you're able to construct it as language like the visualization can take a lot of a lot of forms but this idea that i can't visualize is an emotional belief it, it, it's not an actuality because visualization can come in a lot of different forms and and you know you you know if if, if you say to yourself like okay a horse and an elephant well, can you, if you close your eyes, maybe you can see the visual, the visuals of a horse and an elephant. But even if you can't, you can discern that a horse is not an elephant. And, and, and so discernment is a type of visualization. And, and, and so what you're going for is a knowing of what the concept is rather than necessarily needing to see all of the visual details. So the way that this could be applied to crypto is, you know, you look at the different milestones that, uh, that a specific, you know, project has to get to, to get to a certain market cap, um, you know, or, or certain milestones in, in, in a strong community. So in NF treasure, it was 6,000 keys. And now the thing that we're visualizing is 12,000 keys that represents a, a growing community and, a, and a, a growing treasury that allows us to build all of these interesting products and, and, and create something that can be super competitive in the marketplace that brings value back to the community. So, you know, I'm constantly seeing that and, and speaking out loud what I see happening in the project so, so that other people can can catch the wave of that and and recognize that that, you know, there there's an emotional stability in this project that a lot of projects in crypto don't have. And then again, that emotional balance is what allows you to make your visualization more effective. So again, shout out Cock and You. So in the Cock and You community, Things like like the botcast, the Wex After Dark uh, space, like these are things that showcase that there are stable, emotionally balanced humans that are interested in this project for more than just financial gains. Of course, that's part of it, but but in many ways, when you when you can focus on building utility, when you when you can focus on networking, you you know. In the 90s and early 2000s, but before probably a lot of people were on this call were, were doing any kind of business or maybe even born, you used to join the Chamber of Commerce or you used to join like a networking club. And so you, you would pay like $300 for the year or sometimes it was like $50 a month or something. And then that would give you access to like the this group that you went to once a month. And the whole purpose of the group was that the group agreed that if I need somebody to make a t-shirt, I'm going to go to John because I know he does t-shirts. If I need somebody, somebody, uh, who, who's going to do, you know, consulting with it, with, with me, I'll go to John. Cause I know, I know that he does business con consulting. So, so you were agreeing to work with the other people in, in, in the group. And, and, and so if, if I needed cable service, I went to the, the cable guy there. If, if I need, if I wanted to take somebody to a restaurant, I took it to somebody who owned a restaurant in that group. And so you grew your business by having this really tight knit, um, 
networking group that was agreeing to do business with one another. Well, in many ways, NFT and meme coin projects are that. And there's probably a SaaS product in here somewhere where where you could better organize um, like a community board of, hey, these are all of the things that, that our community does. If you want to support our project, support the people in our community, because the more abundant they are, the more that they can put money back into this project. Anyhow, I'll put that on my long list of things to develop for crypto. All right. So that's imagination and visualization. The next thing that Neville Goddard used to teach, which can be really effective, is a technique called revision. And so revision, the definition of this is to mentally revise past events to change their impact on the present and future. So, whoa, you're you're saying that the past and the future aren't, aren't real? Like the stuff that happened in the past, it didn't really happen? Well, Neville Goddard believed that we lived in kind of a consciousness style simulation and, and that if you visualize the past strong enough, at a minimum, you could change your emotional state about it. And at a maximum, maybe those events actually changed because how do you know that you're you and how do you know that your life is your life? Well, you wake up and you remember what happened in your life. But who's to say that when you wake up, you're not just downloading an invented thing? Like you may not have actually even lived all that. How do we know the simulation just didn't seed you with a bunch of uh, a bunch of memories that you woke up and you remembered and you think that you lived all of those things, but it's just computer code that's convincing you that you did. So we don't 